please welcome Joaquin De Posada, an international speaker, author, and consultant. Thank you. Well, my concept is uh, very simple. You're one applied idea away from a very big, big success. New process, uh, new invention, and we're better than in NASA, where you people here change the world. Uh, one idea from one man, we have to conquer the moon, change the whole world. And I certainly hope that we'll never, ever lose the leadership position that we have right now in space exploration. And uh, we're very creative, and I think that we'll continue to hold that position. Now, uh, Sir Francis Bacon said something very important. Knowledge is power. And he was right. Knowledge is power. However, he should have said something else. He should have said, applied knowledge is power. Because if you know and you don't do, you don't know. So the important thing is that you have knowledge, but it has to be applied. There's a lot of knowledge in the world that is never applied. And people don't care what you know. People only care what you do, what results. Reminds me of the story of three little frogs. Three little frogs are floating down the river. Three of them are floating down the river. One of them decides to jump into the water. How many frogs are left on top of the leaf? Two? No, actually three. Because deciding to jump and jumping are two different things all together. How many times have you decided to lose weight? <laughs> how many times have you decided to stop smoking? <laughs> or maybe how many times have you decided to clean your home on a, on a weekend? How does it look on Monday? <laughs> so deciding and doing are two different things. I hope that today, a whole day in innovation here in, in NASA, I hope that one idea, one idea that you can apply will change your career, will change your life, your loved ones, even will change NASA, or might even change the whole world. Darwin said, the survivors of any species are not necessarily the strongest, and they're not necessarily the most intelligent. They're the ones who are most responsive to change, and that is what it's all about now, change. Who can change quicker? That's what counts. And those that can will be very, very successful. What my one applied idea, my one applied idea that I want to share with you happened when I was uh, flying from San Juan, from San Juan to, uh, to New York, and I was reading a book, <laughs> Daniel Coleman's Emotional Intelligence. One page, one page devoted to the marshmallow experiment. And I read that page and said, wow, this is the most important factor for success. Self-discipline, the ability to delay gratification, that is the most important factor for success. I have to write a book about it. And some of you that might know the experiment, it was done in Stanford University by an American psychologist. 643 children put together in a room one by one with a marshmallow, and they told the kid, four years old, Sonny, uh, Johnny, or Mary, I'm gonna leave you here with the marshmallow. If when I come back, that marshmallow is here, you get two. If you eat it, you get nothing else. You decide what happened. To tell a, two, a four year old kid to wait 15 minutes for a marshmallow, it's like telling you, yeah, we'll have a coffee in three hours. It's a long time. So what happened? Door closes, two out of three, ate the marshmallow. Five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, 40 minutes, I can't stand it, ate the marshmallow. However, one out of three, one out of three understood the most important factor for success, which is self-discipline. I will not eat the marshmallow because I want to. And they would do all kinds of stuff in order not to eat it, go under the table, look at the ceiling, play around. That kid already knew. 15 years later, follow-up study, what did they find? 100% of the children that did not eat the marshmallow were successful. SAT exam grades, 213 points higher than the kids that ate the marshmallow. So obviously this is the most important factor for success. So I wrote the book. What happened? Worldwide bestseller, 20 languages. Number one in Korea, 62 weeks in a row. Three and a half million books sold. Changed my career, my economy, <laughs> and <laughs> my family, what allowed me to go all over the world. So right now I lecture on this concept all over the world. So that one idea, how many psychologists have read that book? Thousands. How many people read the, uh, how many people read the, uh, the uh, emotional intelligence book? Thousands, millions. 
but yet one, one applied idea. This is a book. This is such an important concept. Let's write a book. So what I'm saying is that I went through it. One applied idea can change your life and your world. Some people say, I don't have enough time to write a book, or oh, it's difficult to write a book, or whatever. Then I talk about Jean Dominique Baubi, French. Best word job in the world. Editor of Elle magazine. All the models in the world were after him because they wanted to be in the, in the, in the magazine and uh, beautiful kids. Buys a BMW, takes the kid out to test the car. Suddenly, stroke. He opened his, house, his eyes, he's there in a hospital in France, totally paralyzed. He could only move his left eyelid, open, open it and close it, open it and close it. That's all he could do. Okay, and that man understood that he had an idea that he had to tell the world what had happened to him and how he coped with it. And he wrote The Diving Bell and the Butterfly with one person helping him, one woman. He would, he would go every morning to the hospital, and they would take the French alphabet, the most common uh, letter used, to the least common, and he would go like this. He would, OK, P, all right, O. So he would go letter by letter until the whole book was written. That was his mission in life. The book was finished, handed, uh, not, not handed, but showed to him. With the left eyelid, he saw it, and he died the following day. So that was his mission in life, one person with a mission. Irotada Ototaki, brought a book, no arms, no legs. This guy inspired me. Because when I finished my first book, which is called uh, uh, How to Survive Among Piranhas, that book was in a manuscript. I would, I would write it in planes. I went to do a speech at the University of Puerto Rico, left my car outside. When I came in, I, when I came out to the car, broken glass, my briefcase stolen with my manuscript, no copy. I stopped writing until I met him. Wow, he wrote a book without arms, without legs. How could I have stopped writing because of losing 200 pages? I started again, and I finished that book. It's now also a bestseller, thanks to him. Arlene Muniz, cashier in Puerto Rico. One idea. She likes to write. She was a cashier, making seven bucks an hour. Wrote a poem book, and then she sells her book when customers go to pay in the cash, in the cash register and she makes three times what every kid makes in that supermarket. One idea. <laughs> this guy had the idea, 10 years old. He wrote the book, and he was, selling, he was signing books with me in Los Angeles in another table, another table. This guy, 10 years old, I was writing, oh my god, he's 10 years old. <laughs> One applied idea away, OK, from being very successful. Amazon.com, Jeff Bezos. One applied idea. This guy, something else. His mother had him, little baby. Father left, never saw him again. There's a Cuban refugee that left, left Cuba, came to the States, an engineer, fell in love with his mother, uh, mar married her. And uh, when he was 18 or 21 or whatever, he said, Dad, you're my real father. You raised me. I want to I wanna, I wanna have your last name. So he became Jeff Bezos. And that guy, Miguel Bezos, already an engineer, Successful, but you know, not a millionaire. But when he started his company, he needed at least three hundred thousand dollars more, and Miguel Bezos gave him the money, risking everything he had. And of course, now we all know that that those three hundred thousand dollars are worth now millions and millions of dollars because one idea that this guy that was living in New York with everything, <laughs> a good job in the finance world, one idea he had to practice it. And the idea was sell every book ever printed in any language in and out of print in less than one minute. So he changed the world. He changed the world. What an idea. The Google guys changed the world. Never ever did we have, never ever in history have we had knowledge in our hands, everything that mankind knows in the, right here in our laptop, in our iPad, never happened in history. Their big idea, organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. That was the idea, and it's changed our lives. Bill Gates, one computer in every home and in every desk, changed our lives. One applied idea, starting with nothing in a garage. Steve Jobs, now, and Steve Wozniak, those two guys, together, they started on the wrong foot. They started by stealing from a large company. They invented a device 
to steal from AT&T, make phone calls for free. But something straightened them out in life, <laughs> and now <laughs> they had good products, and they became the biggest, largest capitalized company in the world. Even tragedies. This woman, nobody knows her here. In Houston, everybody knows her. She's uh, Andrea Pia Yates. She killed her five kids. Horrible, horrible. That day, Mark was an unemployed writer. He was watching TV. He asked his mother, can you imagine a woman being so desperate that she would hurt her own children? And what she answered really stunned him. I have been there. Bad answer. Oh, my God. Well, you know what? He heard that and said, well, how many women are going through this? And he wrote a, a TV script that now you, most of you know, and how he became a multimillionaire. Okay, Mac Burnett, one idea, throw him in an island, whoever comes out, survives, that's it, made him a multimillionaire. Richard Warman, uh, TED, TED.com, everybody should go to TED.com. You should know that, that, that TED.com, it's great ideas that you learn a lot if you go to that site. Salman Khan, Khan Academy, this guy changed the world, changed education. Now there are no more bad teachers ever. If, you, if your kid has a bad teacher, you go to canacademy.com and you, he, you'll be, your kid will be taught the best possible way. Life throws us a curve. This guy, a truck ran over him, lost his legs. You know what? Started a, a supermarket, half man, half store price. <laughs> okay? Become rich. <laughs> he said, to reach for anything that you haven't had, you will have to do what you have never done. Out of a plane crash, my dear good friends, plane crashes, and he saves her. They're all burned, but they then now, be, they started helping kids that got burned. 30,000 have been helped, and 300,000 people have been affected because they had an accident, and they are now helping humanity. Ralph Lauren, yeah, one big idea, changed my name. He was named originally Laf, La, Ralph Lipschitz. Now, nobody would buy clothes from him right now, right? <laughs> Homeless man in Puerto Rico, what he did to make money, instead of asking for a quarter, he did that. If you take my picture, three bucks. That's 12 times what anyone gives someone. Just because he had a sign, he put Visa, American Express, funny, and I, I, he asked for 144 bucks. Nobody has ever given him that. I asked him, how many people have given you uh, 144 bucks? No one, but three Americans gave me 100 bucks. $100 instead of 25 cents. One idea changed his life. One idea, that's it, I'm finishing with this one. Uh, one idea saved life, this woman, she collected uh, garbage in a dumpster. You know what, one day well, she found a baby. She said, you know what? I'm going to save babies. She saved 32. Babies that mothers throw in a garbage dump. She has raised six of the 32. So and my last idea, what has worked well for me also, my business card. This is my business card. It's a million dollar card. People fight for it all over the world. It's, it's giving me hundreds of thousands of dollars just because of, the, of this card. So one idea can change your life and your business. I finish with this saying. The best day of your life is the one in which you decide your life is your own. No apologies or excuses. No one to lean on, rely on, or blame. The gift of life is yours. It's an amazing journey. You alone are responsible for it, for the quality of it. And remember this, one idea, one idea applied can change your whole life. Thank you so much.